you going to be able to get me down here? Everything be all right if I just stay amongst us? Let me dismiss our children for Children's Church if we've got enough young ones to do, to do that. Y'all go ahead and be dismissed at this point. I am very, want y'all praying hard for Bible school. I know you have been, and, and I'm grateful that we're going to be able to continue it this evening. We'll have supper at 5, and we will try to wrap it up by 7.30, which means that for the next three Sunday nights, we will not have our normal Bible study. Uh, but if you guys want to come, the adults, you can come and help out and eat with us and fellowship. And if, when you get ready to go home, turn around and go home. But the youngins are having a good time, and I was heartbroken at the thought of us not having Bible school this year. And uh, so I'm just very grateful for the flexibility, for the, for the heart of, of, of all the folks in ministry. Thank God that everybody tested negative, and I feel safe about what we're doing. Um, we don't have any control, folks, over viruses. You understand that. But uh, we, we lack with wisdom and in prayer. So I'm just grateful. Let's open up in prayer, and then I've got another. I want to continue our uh, topic of root and fruit. So, Father, we ask you to help us today to hear your word. Help me to be instant and in season, as I've asked uh, our youth workers to be. Speak to our hearts today. We're in uncertain times, Lord. Uh, we always have been. But the certainty of your love for us stabilizes us. And I'm grateful for your love for us. So help us to open up our hearts. Help us to, to bind any distraction. Help us to focus on your word and hear your voice today. Speak, Lord, through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. If you will, open your Bibles to Jeremiah 17. And I want to sort of do a transition today. We've been talking about uh, fruit uh, roots. We hadn't really gotten into talking about fruit. We're going to begin at move toward that because in order to uh, produce fruit, you've got to have some roots to be able to do that. But we've been talking somewhat about some of the negative roots. And I, I want to, uh, uh, this passage I think will, will help direct us in that, and then move us toward what God's call, who God's called us to be. So let's look, Jeremiah speaking very clearly in the 17th chapter. And the Lord spoke, this is God speaking to Jeremiah, and he recorded it for us. Thus says, verse 5, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Now, folks, I want you to look at this verse. If we trust in ourselves, if we trust in our flesh, if we trust in mankind, if we think that the Republicans or the Democrats are going to deliver us, if we think that another nation is going to come in and save us, if we think anybody other than the Lord is going to take care of us, we're in for a bad way. And he says plainly that, that, see, the curse is already there. God's not an announcing the curse. The curse is already there. It happened when we sinned. It happened when Adam fell. And y'all have heard me say it over and over again. I love to blame Adam. And he, of course, he shifted the blame. He said the woman, and then she shifted the blame and said the devil made her do it. But the curse came with the fall. Now, the truth of the matter is, as in, I think this is probably a true statement of all of us, uh, I can blame Adam, but Willard has intentionally sinned. And I think everybody in here has. And so we're all under the curse until we realize what God's done for us. He broke the curse. But he goes on in, in, in verse 6 to explain the plight of those who trust in man and in the flesh and whose heart departs from the Lord. See, uh, It's interesting in Scripture how often the, the Israel was criticized for saying the right things, but their heart was far from Him. And so what we've got to do is be people whose hearts embrace the Lord and not depart from Him. I want to run to Him and not away from Him. 
But verse 6 goes on to say, He shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Now that's about as gloom a, a, a picture as you can make in the natural. And I've been to uh, Israel, and there are some areas of Israel that are ju look just that deserted. Now what is amazing, if you'd look uh, pre-Jewish return, Israel was a devastatingly poor place. And now the, the, the deserts are blooming and, 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 and there's all kind of things being grown and all kind of stuff, life's being coming, is coming to that land literally. But it's because God, God sent, he's, he's doing a work in Israel and we need to pray for Israel. But look at verse 7. I, well, I'm so glad we didn't stop with, and that's why I'm trying to transition from us talking about the root of bitterness into a root of righteousness. So verse 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. I love Crowder's song, All My Hopes in Jesus. Thank God my yesterdays are gone. All my sin is forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. So if our hope is is the Lord. It's not in the Lord. It is the Lord. I know Him. He's not some concept. He's not some idea. He's not some ethereal something out there. He lives in me. And we know Him. And He is my hope. For He shall be like a tree planted by the waters. Which spreads out its roots by the river. And will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So today we're going to begin to transition from getting rid of ungodly roots, anything in our life that's, that, that's cluttering us up and, and, and causing us not to be able to walk most effectively with God, and then transitioning into uh, yielding the fruit of God in our lives, which is what we're called to do. So let me, let me, let me just uh, uh, move forward. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about as we're talking about the roots is the first thing I want us to do is root out some things. We want to root out. There's three areas that we're going to be touching in this particular sermon, and I don't know that I'll finish it today. But the first thing we've got to do is root out. And so I want you to look as John the Baptist was talking uh, at, at his coming about the Messiah and what was going to transpire. John was a very important part of Jesus' coming. And in Matthew chapter 3, let's look at verse 10. I'm, I, uh, it would do you good to go back and read any passage I give you. It'd go back, be good for you to go back and set it in its context. I don't have time to develop that. In, in the short amount of time we have together in, in the sermon time. But, but this is John the Baptist speaking. And in verse 10 he said, And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So we can see part of the, the ministry of Christ. The, the, he's the forerunner of Jesus. He's talking about that there's some things in our lives that have got to be rooted out. Obviously, our sin nature's got to be rooted. It's got to be dealt with. You know, Jesus, I mean, there was a time when I chose to sin and, and knew it was wrong. Uh, not that I was so malicious or so bad. I mean, I'd have been nice to you. I'd have treated you kindly most of the time if you didn't cross me, you know. And, 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 I, and people liked me pretty good, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But, I mean, I was Mr. Howdy uh, uh, in the 10th grade at Whiteville High School. Big deal. So what I'm saying is we're all sinners. And the ax has to be laid to the root that brings forth the sin. And that root of bitterness that we talked about in detail in here is one of the things that we've got to make sure has been, that the ax has been laid to the root. Well, I couldn't take it out on my own. 
The Lord has to do that. And so this is a prophetic word. Uh, he's talking about the, it, it, the axe is being laid to the root of the trees. And the trees that don't bear good fruit will be cut down. But the trees that bear good fruit will, will go forward. Now, Jesus made this plain in the parable of the sower. Again, I'm not going to teach on the parable of the sower. But I do want to lift a couple of verses out of that parable. Mark's version of it. Let's go there. Mark 4. And y'all have read this. You're familiar with it. So I'm not going to try to re-preach it. But he talked about. It, see, Matt and John the Baptist was talking about bad trees that produce bad fruit. Well, I want you to look at what Jesus is talking about. One of the things he talked about in the parable of the sower. And, and this is interesting to me. Let's look at it. Verse 16. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground. Okay. Who, when they heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. They were glad to hear the word. They, 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 but, verse 17, they had no root in themselves. See, folks, it's one thing to have a wicked root that we need to lay the axe to and get rid of. It's another thing to just be hanging out, to just be there, just to sort of be nothing, that, that you, you can be tossed to and fro, uh, that, that, you, that, you don't, that you're not rooted in anything. And there's a warning here to us that it's not okay to just play detente with the devil. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You can't have a peace treaty with Satan. You can't pretend that evil doesn't exist. You can't pretend that you are not tempted to do evil. And so the, the fact that we say, well, I'll just stay out of this fight. You can't. <laughs> so, there, so he's speaking against having no root. So they endure only for a time, and afterward, when tribulation. He didn't say if. I want you to notice, when means it's a coming. Okay, When tribulation. See, Jesus said it plainly. He said, in the world, you will have tribulation. Now, he didn't stop there. He said, be of good cheer. He said, I've overcome the world. So we've got to, we've, we can work through what, we are, what we're going through. But when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. See? So we've got some things that we need to root out. We, we need to make sure that our lives are, are pure from the, the sinful influences, that root of bitterness specifically. But we also need to make sure that we've got that we can that we can root in, and that's where I want to go to. That we need to root out some things. We need to root some things and and intentionally let some things begin to grow in our lives that are going to produce the fruit of righteousness. So let's look at some of these passages about rooting in, and Proverbs twelve. We've, actually, we've got two passages from Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12, 3. said, a man's not established by wickedness. See, that's not where you get rooted. See, the wicked are going to be torn down. You stand in wickedness against God. It may look fine for a season, but there's always an end to it. So a man's not established by wickedness. Now, conversely, I think it would be safe for us to assume that we are established in righteousness. But look on, he says, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. The root of the righteous cannot be moved. Now, in the same chapter, and, and I made a mistake on, the, on the, the slide, so go ahead and show it. This is not Proverbs 4.12, it's Proverbs 12.12. 12. But in that same chapter, it says, The wicked covet the catch of evil men. They want what the evil have. You see somebody that's living an ungodly life, and you think, well, hey, if he can have it, I can have it. Well, you don't need to covet. You don't need to have a, a lustful attitude toward or, or be jealous of the wicked who are prospering. it Because their prosperity is short-lived. And I'm telling you, that rich man in the story of the rich man and Lazarus... <laughs> He would have given up everything he ever had. Even, he, he even wanted to go back and, 
and just tell his brothers how tormenting hell is. And so uh, we don't need to covet the catch of evil men, but the root of the righteous does what? Yields fruit. It yields fruit. So we need to have a root, and we've got to get rid of the bad ones, and we can't just coast along without anything. Okay. So we, we can't have no root, but we need to have a root of righteousness. And the root of the righteous yields fruit. Now, uh, also going back to, to uh, uh, Mark's gospel. Back to the parable of the sower. In Mark 4, 20. It says, he talks about the ones that are bearing good fruit. These are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word. That's why we need to be in church, folks. I'm telling you, you need to be in, in Sunday school. How many of y'all heard Colin speak this morning? See? And, and, and our children need to be in Sunday school. We need to be subjecting ourselves to the word. You need to stay for preaching. I, I used to go to a church and, and, and a bunch of people would leave after Sunday school before preaching because they wanted to get home and, and uh, go to the lake or they wanted to get home and go ahead and finish uh, dinner. And, and uh, I'm preaching to the choir, so I ain't going to beat y'all up for being here. Thank you for being here. But we need to hear the Word. And if all the Word you're getting is at Piney Forest on Sunday morning, you are starving to death. You better have a devotional time. You need to have a time where you discipline yourself to where you can hear from God. Have some time where you're spending some time in the Word of God. We got so many apps. I can get the Bible on, on, on I don't know how many translations in just a few minutes. There's all kind of apps on my phone to listen to the Bible. So now instead of listening to the radio all the time, I, when I'm driving, I'll put the Bible on. And try to hear the word of God. And so we need to hear the word. So those uh, on the good ground hear the word. Now here's way more important than hearing it. What's the next thing we're to do? Accept it. I mean, if, if I tell you something and you saw, oh, you just pulling my leg, it won't do you a bit of good. But if we don't accept the Word, see, the, the Word was made flesh and dwelt, among, and dwelt among us. And that's Jesus. And so we need to accept the Word. We need to, now, I don't have 100% understanding of everything in this book. But what I want to tell you is just apply what you do understand, and you're going to be a whole lot better off than if you just do nothing. So you hear the Word and accept it. Then you can do what? It, it's a natural progression. I'm telling you, you, you plant a strawberry, and if you treat it like it's supposed to be treated, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get some strawberries. You plant a, a grapevine and treat it like it's supposed to be treated, what you're going to get? You're going to get some grapes. You plant an orange tree in the right climate, and what you're going to get? Okay, so it comes... It comes. And so what happens if we, if we hear the word and accept it, guess what we're going to do? We're going to bear fruit. Now some, 30 fold. That's 30 times. 30 times. See? Some 30, some 60, and some 100. Now go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 17. And again, it would help you to go back and get in context everything that's being said here. But picking it up at 17, Paul's saying that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now folks, that is what we've got to have if we're going to bear fruit. Christ dwelling in our hearts through faith. We've got to have heard the word and accepted it. That you being rooted and grounded in what? In what? 
In what? That's agape. That's 1 Corinthians 13. That's being patient and kind. That's not taking into account a, a wrong suffered. That's forgiving. That's moving. And guess what else it says? It never fails. If you love, you will always win. If you love, you'll always win. Being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints. Now, what does all mean? That means anybody that has called on Jesus, red and yellow, black and white, rich or poor, American or Chinese, With all the saints, what is the width and length and depth and height? And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. One translation says it passes understanding. There's also a peace of God that passes understanding. Y'all, I can't figure it all out. But I sure can enjoy it. I can't figure my car out. But I'll get in it and drive home today. And thankful I don't have to walk. Okay? That you may be filled with what? All. Now that ain't part of it. See, that's where he's taking us, James. That's where he wants us to go, Bernard. As long as we live, he's wanting to break us into his image, into, to be conformed to the image of Jesus. And he wants to bring us into all the fullness of God. Will and I were talking about that on the way to church today. Will was talking about how much God's blessed him and how thankful he is to, that, that God's brought him through some of the stuff that, that, that he's been through. And, and we were just talking about, and I, I said to him, Will, the Lord's wanted you to live, have this life. All your life. And rather than lament the years that you feel like you wasted, you, they're not wasted years. You've learned, and, and we all have. There, there are folks that I can reach because of what I've been through. There's folks that you can reach because of what you've been through, and you don't want to go back through it, but you can help them get through it. Do you hear me? And so don't lament, what, but, but let's go into his fullness now. You say, well, okay, preacher, you old man. What, what, what kind of fullness you having? All the fullness of God, that's exactly what I'm having. And that's what we have to do. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, he wants to bring us in. And we were just rejoicing together. There was just a, a lift in my spirit today talking about how that God wants us to experience his abundance. Zoe, abundant life is what. It's what it's referred to in one of our scriptures. All the fullness of God. And that's what he wants us to do. If we have rooted out, and the axe has been laid to the root of some of the wickedness in us, and we have to keep pit pulling that stuff. How many of y'all have, have uh, clean, had your garden just as clear as it could ever be? There was not one, one weed in that entire garden. Well, how about the next week? What 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 what'd you have to do? <laughs> you you better keep hoeing. If you want to have anything, you better keep hoeing. And so what we've got to do, we live in a sinful world, but listen, we can have that fullness. You can sit down and eat those butter beans. Now, shine, I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna have to quit. I'm gonna have to quit. You can sit down. And enjoy the fruit of your labor. And God is calling us to live in his fullness. Now this is a good place for me to stop. Next week I'll pick it up that we're going to root with. And guess who we're rooting with, y'all? Yeah, you got it. So we'll pick this up next week. But do you see where we're going? And then we'll finish this lesson one of these Sundays soon with some of the fruit that he's calling us to live in. But I'm telling you, if you want to get it, uh, the sum total of it, it's the fullness of God. And he makes that available to us. Now, as we get ready for our uh, invitational hymn, if you've got anything on your heart, if you're heartbroken because your youngin's gone to college, and I ain't trying to call out anybody, I really ain't, so I'm, I'm not. 
if you if you worried about uh, what school's going to be like this year for your grade school youngins, if you've got any concern. Or if God is knocking on your heart and saying, you know, there's some stuff in your life that I want to root out. Why don't you come and let me do it? Or if God's saying to you, you can grow better with this community. The church doors are open. Or if you know God's calling you to do a specific task, I'd love to pray with you because God's called all of us. All of us are called into ministry. You think it's just a preacher, you're way mistaken and missing the fullness of God. So if you've got anything that you need prayer for this morning, bring it to this altar and join together at the schools and let's pray against COVID. Let's pray against the wickedness that's being taught. Let's pray... Uh, that God will mold the lives of our young people to know Him. And He'll send us a move of His Spirit. Stand up. What's our hymn? 485. 485. The altar's open. If you need prayer, please come.